Awesome. Thanks a lot, Klaus. Uh, yes, I definitely will not win the tallest award in any competition. But uh, yeah, so I've been in the EV space for a long time. Um, first EV I worked on was back in 2003. So I showed up to the EV party before anyone else showed up. I was sitting there alone. But um, anyway, really elated to talk today. I was, when Stein had those five things listed, I was like, connected electric, connected electric. Please, please, please win. So I'm really glad those were the two that Stein picked as, as near term. Because really my talk today is about connected and electric. And it's really talking about how connected and electric are best friends. How connected vehicles can help you go electric and connected vehicles will help you succeed um, as, you, as you go through that transition. So that's really the punchline. Uh, you already know my, you know my end result, connected electric best friends. So uh, if I run out of time, that's all you need to remember. I'm a data nerd. Um, I love it when I can share or talk about fresh data. So really glad the Geotab team published this today. So this, this just went out earlier today. It was a, a survey done, of, so Edward mentioned it, of fleet managers in UK and to get their ideas about going electric, are they close, are they long term, and what are the barriers. So there's a lot of de uh, details that are shared. So if you want to go down to the link, again, Geotab, open environment, we share our data uh, within Privacy protected, security protected. Um, but if you want some more information, you can go to the link below. The key is, you know, 85, eight, sorry, 89. So basically, 90% of, of the fleet managers uh, plan to, to actually go ahead of the government mandate. And so, um, Megan and I are from the Waterloo office. Uh, it's very easy to understand our job at the Waterloo office. Our job at the Waterloo office is to make sure that these 90% of people. Have every, the fleet managers have everything they need to go electric successful. And so the Geotab Waterloo office, that's, that's, that's what we do. Um, and, and so within that, you know, it, again, I, I will say Geotab Waterloo office, we, uh, we were historically a, a different company until a few months ago, so we were Fleet Karma. As Klaus said, you know, we started in 2007. From day one, we always uh, were focused on EV. So again, um, a, a bit early to the party. Uh, but then we started working with early fleets that were going electric and we understood you know, where were their pain points. The vehicles at the time were very expensive, they were very range limited and so we were making sure that um, we, were, we were working with them side by side to make sure even if it was small numbers that they were doing it successfully. And then we quickly realized that okay they need better connectivity. Um, connectivity has such a core critical role to both help the fleet go electric but also succeed as they started integrating these EVs. And so in 2011, we started building our own hardware, our own portal. Um, and then by the end of last year, we had about 30 countries around the world where Fleet Karma was doing business. And so we were talking with Geotab and we were you know, elated earlier this year to officially announce that uh, we, we were acquired by Geotab. And then in January, we're actually gonna fully amalgamate. So, so uh, apologies, there's a bit of confusion between Fleet Karma and Geotab. Uh, the shortcut is we are Geotab. And so what Fleet Karma is, is the Waterloo office of Geotab, um, and that really is how we will be legally known as of about a month and a half from now. So when we talk about connectivity in electric vehicles, the, you know, we think about it, and this is what we've learned over the past decade of working with fleets going electric, there's really three parts, and it, it, there is some chronology to it as a fleet goes from 0% to 100%. So we work with a few fleets that are 100% electric, most of the fleets we work with are you know, sub 10% now. They're, they're, they're just gradually transitioning in. And so when we think about the three parts, there's going electric, operating electric, and smart charging. And, and so I'm gonna quickly talk about three of those. And you know, obviously I'm heavily biased. I think Geotab is the best system in the world to go electric with. But whatever telematics platform you use, these are the three things that are really important that your system needs to deliver you if you wanna go electric successfully. And so first off, Show of hands, who knows a fleet manager that has a bunch of spare time? Yeah. I have yet to meet a man or a woman that is in charge of a fleet that isn't immensely busy and has no spare hours. And so when the executive team or, or council comes to them and says, hey, I'd love you to go 10% electric, they say, with what time? Because right? they have to figure out, okay, well, I'm used to petrol vehicles, I'm used to, I'm used to diesel vehicles, I understand that how they work. I generally understand how to maintain them. Now you're asking me about this other vehicle that people are saying is range limited and somehow it changes in weather and um, is the battery going to degrade? There's a bunch of open questions. And how am I going to charge it? Like I understand how a fueling station works. 
you know, now there's these different types of charging protocols and, and managed charging. And so that's where connectivity can play a really critical role. Because what we can do is we can use data off your current petrol and diesel vehicles to find out where in your fleet can you go electric successfully. And we basically simplify it. And it is, it is a personalized education tool, a, a personalized uh, report that says, look, in your thousand vehicles, here's the subset, here's the fraction of the fleet that can go electric today, and this is the vehicle that will work for you, and this is your savings. And it really simplifies it, because at the end of the day, those are the two core questions that a fleet manager needs to answer. A, will it do the job, because the fleets are in the, that, that vehicle is enabling someone to do their, their job, so if the EV can't get back to base, doesn't have enough range, then we obviously can't do it, can't use it. The second is, will it save me money? Because right, a lot of people think, okay, well, EVs are going to cost more. That isn't true. And we're really seeing that transition now as the cost of these vehicles are coming down, that there's a notable portion in the fleet where it will save you money. And so we have something, electric vehicle suitability assessment. It's something we've done for years within Fleet Karma. We're right in the midst of transitioning it into the geotab environment. Uh, and I'm, I'm very glad to report that, that my marching orders from my boss is that priority one is to bring suitability assessments into Europe first. And so we have a team actively working on that. The first part of the world that's going to get suitability assessments within Geotab is Europe. Uh, it, is, it is my marching orders from Neil. And so uh, Megan and myself and everyone else in the Waterloo is, is working on this right now. <coughs> so to give you a, a quick synopsis of what we do with EBSA, again, it's make it easy to go electric. And so I'm going to walk through basically the process. We take a bunch of Geotab data, we ingest it into our system. If you, either ha if you already have Geotab devices, it's super easy. We just ingest it into the system. If you don't, we can deploy a limited set of Geotab devices into your fleet, where we've already sort of said, okay, here are the candidates where maybe electric makes sense. Um, we grab a bunch of data. Usually, statistically, we only need three weeks of data to actually run an accurate model. We generally find fleet managers like to have more data into the system, so they generally run it on two to three months of data. Sometimes they can run a full year. Again, if you already have Geotab deployed, it's great. We'll ingest as much data as you want. And then we look at every single vehicle and we say, okay, what if this one was you know, a Renault Zoe? What if this one was an EMV 200? And we'll run the EV models and say, okay, which ones made it back to base, which ones had enough range, and which ones saved you money? And within Fleet Karma, we more recently added, well, uh, an infrastructure analysis. And so we would say, okay, well, if this is our recommendation for which EVs um, you could buy, we also would say, okay, well, this is the infrastructure that matches perfectly with those vehicles. Because we get a lot of good data about when will those vehicles be back at base, how much energy do they need. So we get really all the parameters needed to make a really informed infrastructure decision. And again, fleet managers, you know, really phenomenally experienced on the petrol and diesel side, but this is a whole new world. And so what we try and do is provide a system to be able to walk through that. Right now, the EBSA, what we're, what we're trying to get out the door as absolutely quickly as possible within the geotab environment is going to include the first one. It's going to include the vehicle side. So does it have enough range? Will it save me money? And shortly thereafter, the infrastructure uh, capabilities will, will also roll in. So just to give you a quick example of what this looks like, so this is one of the fleets that, uh, that we worked with. Um, within Europe, they were uh, a, a grid operator, and they said, OK, we want to start going electric. Let's get a sense of, of where we can go electric successfully in our fleet. Uh, this was a smaller study. We did 27 vehicles, so we, we deployed devices on 27 vehicles. You can see passenger cars, vans, and small vans. And we said, okay, let's figure out where of these 27 could you go electric and save money. And sort of what we call green and green. So green, financially green, and then environmentally green. So first off, we look at how the vehicles are used, a couple of quick parameters of the existing fleet. Uh, average distance of 86 kilometers a day. So this is actually a pretty high utilization fleet. You know, I, fleet averages are, are frequently less than that in the, in the light duty vehicle space. Um, the real world energy consumption was about 10 liters per 100, uh, per 100K and 49% idling. And, and a lot of people are usually pretty surprised by that. I would say that that is not that uncommon in uh, our fleet analysis. Um, but that also leads and says, okay, well, idling an electric vehicle is, is not an issue, right? So, so fleet managers that to chase people not to idle, if they're running an EV, it's, it's usually not a, bit, not a problem. So, uh, fleet managers love that because the last thing they have, they like doing is, is chasing down drivers to, to change their behaviors. So hey, if you have an EV, idle is uh, basically as much as you want because it doesn't matter as long as it's fully electric. 
So, so again, this is the distribution of how those vehicles are driven. You can see some vehicles were driven more than 225 kilometers in a single day. Um, again, under the hood, the analysis is using a ton of data, but, but again, we try and make sure that we also present some, some useful synopsis for the, for the fleet and the fleet manager. And you can see the breakdown of what the fuel consumption was by, by type of vehicle. And not a big shock, the, the trend is the larger vehicles were consuming more energy. But here's where it gets exciting. Again, 27 vehicles. In this case, we found seven vehicles that an EV would do the job and the EV would save the fleet money. So again, I'm not saying every vehicle in the fleet, right? We did 27, seven were ideal candidates to go electric. When we started running this kind of analysis seven, eight years ago, it was, it was a good result for EVs if 5% of the fleet recommended to go electric. If there was 5% of the fleet that could go electric cost effectively, that was an EV friendly report. Like that was a good result. These days we average usually most fleets, when we do an analysis, we generally find between 30 to 40% of the fleet can go electric cost effectively. It'll save the fleet money. The EV will do the job and it will save you money on average in sort of 30 to 40% of the fleet. We see some lower and we see some higher. A couple months ago, we had our first report that had 100% EV recommendation. There was every single vehicle in that fleet could go electric today and the EV would do the job and save the money on every vehicle we analyzed. That's rare, I don't think we're gonna see that a, a ton. But again, there's significant opportunities in fleets today to go electric in a cost-effective way, in a way that will save the fleet money. You can see some of the savings that were involved. Um, and again, this is where, when you sort of zoom out, by making the right recommendations, they could reduce the operating cost of that fleet as a whole by 9%, reduce emissions by 17%, and reduce uh, fuel by 19%. And again, we've, like that's, that's pretty substantial uh, benefits, right? And this is where we, whether you call it triple bottom line, well you, whether you call it green and green, this is where going electric in the right way and not putting electric vehicles where they're not suited, where they won't fit, will save you money and will save you emissions. But you know, most fleets really, making sure that there's a good bottom line picture is, is really important. So that's the first part. That's what we call the suitability assessment. That's about fleets that are starting to say, hey, I wanna go electric. And we find fleets love that until they're about 30% electric. Once they're 30, 40% electric, they have a really good sense of their fleet. They'll still run EVSAs here and there, but, but really from that zero to 30 range, that's where the suitability assessment is really the critical partner, critical friend of the fleet manager. It also really helps them sitting down with the drivers and saying, look, I'm giving you a vehicle that will work, and this is why, and I'll show you the data, and we analyze it on the temperature that we're concerned about, and this is why it's gonna do the job for you. And then they can go to finance and say, look, this is the trade-off between CapEx and OpEx, right? Um, again, really phenomenal from sort of the zero to 30-ish to percent of the fleet, uh, and still useful after that, but really that's the sweet spot. After that, the go electric, you need data about going electric, and so the team in Waterloo, we've been really focused on the second one to make sure that uh, Geotab bar none is the best in the world at providing data when you're running an EV fleet, when you have EVs in your fleet. Again, whether it's 2% electric, 5% electric, or 100% electric. And so, the kind of questions that we really try to make sure are easily answered, Am I making the most of my investment in EVs? So if you buy a plug-in, especially a plug-in hybrid, please make sure you plug it in. It's much cheaper to run on electric. Uh, it, is, it is less efficient if you just run it on gas all the time. Um, how much am I charging, where am I charging, and are, are my batteries healthy? Again, within Geotab, and with Fleet Carmen as part of Geotab, we're pretty sure we have the largest data set in the world outside of the automakers about how these batteries are operating, how their life is. We've, you know, we've got over a decade worth of data across a large swath of EVs from all the different OEMs. So we have a really good gauge about how these batteries are doing. The punchline is, other than one make model year combination, they're doing really well. So you can ask me after which one's the one you probably don't want to buy. Um, so I, I'm really happy to say that the team is very close to launching this. We're gonna be launching this in Q1 of next year. So, so right around the corner. Um, Geotab already, within Geotab, we already do, uh, we already support a number of EVs and we provide, we can provide operational data on EVs, but there are a couple big enhancements that we're just about to launch. And so in Q1, we're gonna be uh, notably increasing the ability of the system to report energy use while driving. And so this is the kilowatt hours per trip for EVs and, and plug-in hybrids. And within plug-in hybrids, you'll be able to use that to understand how much is my plug-in hybrid running on electricity versus how much of it is running on liquid fuel. Second is charging reports. This is, is, is 
really important ability for a fleet manager that wants to know how much is the EV costing me, <laughs> right? That fuel input is not zero, the, the fuel's not free. Um, so they need to know how much energy is being pulled and when is it being pulled because they might be on a variable tariff. And the, the ending and starting state of charge of that. And then the near real time state of charge. So this, you know, there's a number of fleets we work with that need it for dispatch or, or need it for, to understand just where's the vehicle right now, what's its current state of charge, um, and, and really, really, really well suited for the dispatch environment. So all of that is going to go live within Geotab in Q1 of 2019. And again, we can do geofence reports around charging, and this becomes really important when, you, as a fleet manager, you want to understand what is my actual cost to run an EV. And we work with a lot of fleets all around the world, and a number of them have different tariffs based on what depot the vehicle is charging at. And so on one, they'll be on a flat structure. On one, they'll be on a, on a very strong time of use structure. And so they need to be able to analyze by depot and by vehicle. So we make that very simple. So again, there's a lot of different use cases on what you need when you're running electric vehicles. But, but the last one, when you, when you start hitting enough electric vehicles at a depot, you know, this is where connectivity and electric vehicles truly, truly, truly are best friends. Because if you have a lot of electric vehicles and they're not connected, their load becomes a liability. Their load becomes an issue on not only your building, but the grid writ large. If those vehicles are connected, they become an asset. You can actually actively manage them, and Stein did a really phenomenal job introducing it. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it today, just in the interest of, of, of time here. Um, but within Fleet Karma, for many years, we've been working on active load management, and so we work with a number of utilities, and we've rolled out a number of programs in the last two years where utilities are paying either fleets or individuals for charging at the time that is really good for the grid. So if you charge a time for the grid for, that's good for the grid, you get money back. If you charge a time that's not uh, good for the grid, you don't get money back. And so uh, Smart Charge New York and New York City with Con Edison is the largest program of that type, um, but we have a number that we're rolling out all over the world. But within that, you have active load management, and Stein talked about this. And this is where all the vehicles get back to depot, you plug in when you get back to depot, you go off and do your thing. But because we have all the data of what's the state of charge of the vehicle, when it needs to be fully charged, we do all that management in the background and we guarantee you the vehicle will be fully charged by the time you need it to be fully charged. If that's six in the morning, it's gonna be full at six in the morning. But whether it charges right away or it slows down or it stops, we'll actively manage that for both the building's needs and the utility's needs. And in many cases, there's a monetary value to the fleet to that. And so this is the longer term thing. Again, electric vehicle monitoring, the data when you run a fleet, that's a lot of that's moving into the Geotab system in Q1. The suitability assessment will be shortly thereafter. This is a longer term thing that we will have within the Geotab environment, and it is something that's going to be critical for fleets as they hit the 20, 30, 40% of the fleet is electric, and we'll make sure that the system's ready for you as that, as that becomes needed. So again, I, I really do, last thing I want to stress on, on Geotab, our view is, you know, we're not going to be able to build every use case, we're not going to be able to meet every EV need, there are common things that every fleet going electric needs. We will have that built native into the system. But for us, the open platform is critical because people in this room are gonna have very unique needs that are specific to you. And so it's really core for us that our platform enables you to do that. So we're gonna have the EV technology based, baked into the Geotap platform, but we're gonna make sure it's an open collaborative platform for you to customize and adapt to your needs. And really important that we empower our resellers to help make those customizations for, for the end fleet. So within that, Waterloo office, our marching orders are very specific. For fleets that are between one and 100% electric, our job is to make sure you have everything core that you need, at least the hooks so you can customize to your specific use cases. But really, if you're going between one and 100% electric, Geotab is the right place for you. Again, you can use whatever Telemax platform you want, but I'm biased, and my job is to make sure that it has everything you need. So within that, thanks a lot for your time. I'm going to bring up Colin. Uh, Colin really doesn't need an intro, but he's EVP of sales marketing. Thank you.